uh, yeah. So good morning, Wisdom Tribe. You remember good morning, uh, Vietnam, eh? So uh, good morning, <laughs> Wisdom Tribe. And, uh, <laughs> then I'll uh, hand over to Lee. I've just put in the chat box, uh, Cecile, you mentioned yesterday something about changes to, to the Zoom uh, um, settings and everything. And, and I found a particular uh, an article that relates to that. So if you have a look in the chat box, you'll see, uh, you'll see a link to the, the details about the changes. They're not enforced changes. They um, uh, enabled uh, changes to, for, for users of free accounts and single pro accounts so they can improve their own security if they feel the need to do so um, on, their, on their sessions. So, right, Lee, over to you. Well, good morning, everyone. It's great to see you all. I do um, feel like these are familiar and wonderful people. Um, and uh, yeah, I look forward to spending the next half an hour with you. Um, it seemed to be a logical progression in my mind after talking about um, personal growth, language, um, listening, um, thinking, uh, you know, looking at the person in the mirror um, to looking at what does it mean um, to extend that um, in terms of respect. Um, and, and as with everything, even though respect is about the other, um, just wanting to, 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 for us to pause for a moment and again just come back to, so if we are going to be um, purposefully or intentionally respectful, um, which will come to how we do that, it, it, it has to start with us. Um, or the, that is what we are asserting, let's put it that way. Um, and I just want to, um, Ian has referred to the fact that uh, he and I actually met when we were doing negotiation facilitation um, together with the dealmaker company. Um, and I went on to do a lot of facilitation for women um, in negotiation. And we specifically started negotiation in that program with um, your own level of self-confidence, your own level of self-respect. Because if you don't have that in place, you can't expect other people to respect you. Um, so there's, a, there's something that you have to find in yourself that is a platform that enables uh, a mutual respect. Um, and I wanted just to start there. Uh, before, you know, as, as a way of going into this topic of, of respecting others. Great, thanks, uh, thanks Lee, for, for that intro. Herman, I see you want to pick up there. Yes, um, I felt challenged uh, by Lee's statement that uh, being true to, my, to myself at the same time respecting others is a paradox. I don't see that as a paradox at all. I think um, respecting others, and I think you, you actually implied that just now, um, impl imp uh, can only happen that, uh, if I respect myself. I can't respect anybody else if I have co complete disrespect or disregard for myself. So I don't see that as a paradox. That's just my introductory remark. Thanks. Okay, thanks, Simon. Uh, anyone else like to pick up on that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> if I am, <coughs> excuse me. Um, I don't know if anybody's read that book, <coughs> sorry, um, Cyber Cybernetics. Ooh. <coughs> it's a book that was written by Maxwell Maltz. <laughs> yeah, don't take any chances. <coughs> My piece of toast went down the wrong way. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, anybody read that book, Cyber Cybernetics? Um, it was written by a guy called Maxwell Maltz in the 50s, and he was a, um, a plastic surgeon. And he found that despite people coming in and having a nose job and having this done and that done, they were still unhappy with, them, with the situation, despite the fact that they had this new facelift. And he was the first one that referred to the word or the term self-image um, as it relates to our subconscious. And he said that um, between your conscious and your subconscious mind, there's this filter. 
So if you're uncomfortable with yourself or you have a lack of confidence, then that filters through to your conscious mind, which is where you actually start reacting. So despite what you want to do, if you have the sense of no confidence in yourself, then that will portray itself in your behavior. So everything you do is filtered through this um, filter that actually results in you acting really the way you're thinking. So exactly what you're saying, Lee, if you have no, if you have lack of confidence, no respect in yourself, then it doesn't matter what you, you try and do, your behavior will be a direct result from, uh, from the way you, your subconscious mind is controlling what you do. Right. Thanks. Thanks, Ian. Um, Trevor, I'm sure you'd love to dive in on this on this particular one. No, you don't want to. Okay, Cello. Morning, everybody. Morning. Um, I saw the slide, and it's quite an, an interesting one. Uh, and yes, it goes back to that whole taking accountability and just being authentically yourself for me. Those are the, the immediate words that resonate and that come up for me. Be authentic, be as much as 100% yourself. You know, there's a statement that we sometimes say to guys when we are being a little rough with them, when we are coaching them, we say to them, no one can ish for you. I, I can't say that way. But we can do certain things for you, but we can't go to the toilet for you. There are certain things that you just have to do for yourself. Can I just, may I come in, please? Go right, for it, yeah. Uh, yeah. To me, just what does respect mean to each of us? You know, that's, uh, um, and I'm great that Lee is used to put up this word today and my objective of the meeting today is to find out what what does respect mean to each one of us thank you okay thanks thanks guy that's respect there you go when you see the when you see the the the, the horse the horse buying you bar back uh, so <laughs> so uh, go, go, good version of respect yeah i think um okay lee you want to pick up on that yeah, so, um, you know, we've started with this idea that, that um, if you expect respect, it has to start with yourself. And if you're going to respect others, then you have to be practicing on yourself. You, you, but um, I want to come back to, and guys raised the question, what is respect? And this is where um, I do want to kind of, look at what I, I think is something of a paradox around where I am true to myself and respecting others. And that is around what does it mean to respect somebody else I, when their views and their world um, and the, the way that they understand the world is in conflict with mine. Um, and so I want to be true to myself. I want to be true to my values. I want to be true to, um, what is important to me. Um, but it is in, in direct opposition to your values and what is important to you. So in a particular situation, how do I weigh up how much I adapt in order to respect what you want or, um, acquiesce because it's more than just you know respect i can respect a person at a distance but when i actually have to deal with them and i want to give just a simple story of a scenario that played out at a university where um, a young um, lecturer uh, needed to use one of the lecture rooms um, and consistently the the lecturer that was in that room uh, prior to her lecture went late. So over and over again, uh, the lecture would run late, which meant that this young lecturer's le um, lecture always started late. So the one day she just walked into, into the lecture, uh, lecture room and kind of just started sort of standing there. Um, and the, the lecturer who was there was a senior lecturer and she laid a complaint against this woman for not respecting her because of her seniority. But of course, the younger lecturer felt disrespected 
that her time was not being honored. So it's in these places of um, conflict between what I understand to be respect, what you understand to be respect, and how that plays out in real scenarios. Yeah, I mean, uh, do you want to pick up there? Yes, I find it quite interesting because the, uh, the elder lecturer insisted of being respected because of her age, totally disregarding her bad behavior by overspending on time. So quite frankly, uh, the, the saying is respect is to be earned. And she didn't, she didn't ma make anything to earn the respect of the younger lecturer. Age has got nothing to do with being respected. Thanks, Simon. Uh, Ian, you wanted to pick up on that? Um, yeah, I think that uh, there's a direct conflict between respect and ego. Um, so it's not maybe necessarily because she felt she, well, she did feel she was senior to the other lecturer. So therefore, from an ego point of view, it was her right, so to speak, to, to do what she wanted to do. So suddenly, the biggest conflict of respect is ego. And if your ego gets in the way, then kind of you disrespectful because your, your world is your world and um, you want to dictate it through, through your ego. Stella? I wanted to just pick up where, where Ian is, uh, is speaking about ego and I'm just reminded and I wanted to remind the group of, uh, from our few conversations before when we spoke about uh, personal interest. For me, that's the quickest word that came up as Ian was speaking, that yes, it's that personal interest again that plays with our ego. You know, when you can set aside your personal interest to make sure that the work still continues and becomes what it needs to become, you then interfere because you want the thing to become you. And that's what a, a selfish or selfishness of an ego would do. Right, thanks, Silla. Um, Trevor, yeah. Okay, so that's why I wanted to hold back a little bit. Uh, Lee, if you could go to the next slide. Um, just everyone sort of touching and dancing around the issue as far as I'm concerned. Um, and that is related to the vested interest, which is also the ego position. Uh, I'm, I'm a huge believer uh, that, that people who respect themselves highly also tend to have a huge ego as well when compared to individuals uh, that do not believe in themselves. Um, so, so I correlate low ego with people who have poor self images and I correlate high ego with people who have high self images. And this little statement that uh, Lee put up for me, I thought was magnificent uh, because I see it as being wrong. Uh, and so how do I uh, criticize Robin Sharma? Well, this is how I do it, where he says the respect you give others is a dramatic reflection of the respect you give yourself. As I was looking at that yesterday, I said, there's a flip here. Um, it should be the other way around. The respect you give yourself is a dramatic reflection of the respect you give others. And I think that's a subtle nuance and a flip, uh, which always keeps bringing me back to the importance of the in individual and what's in it for me. So, Lee, I don't know if you want to take it from that perspective. Thanks, Trevor. I'd actually just like to, to, to add in a comment there. I think, you know, one of the challenges with the word ego, um, it's, it's much like the word attitude. You know, people in, in mainstream have, have certain connotations. So if you've got an attitude, it's generally meant you've got a bad attitude, not a good attitude. And if you've got an ego, it means you've got a big ego and, and it's an ego that, uh, that doesn't uh, allow space for others to, to, to operate in. Um, so it's a negative, whereas as I, I don't think, uh, you know, that's, that's what Trevor's saying at all. You know, a, a strong ego is an ego that is actually not affected by minutia, by, by irritating uh, small things like, you know, you didn't give me respect. You know, your ego is strong enough to, to actually deal with... Uh, with that disrespect, um, because it's, it, it's like water off a duck's back, as opposed to being the ego of the lecturer who, whose, whose ego was, um, was uh, offended by, by the lack of, perceived lack of respect that, that, that she was receiving. So I think they're, they're, they're very big differences in, in the way that you perceive the, the, um, the use of, of certain words. Um, and, and I think it comes back to, again, what, what we were talking about, the, the self-interest uh, um, concept as well. So 
yeah, I, I think, you know, the subtleties of language, the subtleties of semantics uh, uh, can be interpreted in so many different ways, just depending on where the individual who's hearing them is, is coming from. So, uh, yeah, that's my little bit of input. Herman? Uh, yes, I think um, self-respect, a healthy self-respect combined with humility is really what counts in my eyes. Thanks, Herman Guy. Um, th there was just a quote I came across. My personality is who I am. My attitude depends on who you are. So, anyway. Cecile, you've been very quiet in the corner there this morning. You want to have a, have a chat on, on what you've heard so far and your thoughts on, on the concept? <laughs> it was um, interesting when you first said um, we must say what respect means for each of us. I was thinking of what we were taught as children about the respect. Um, and, well, part of it was the respect the old, well, it's biblical, so respect your elders, and but it's more about manners than respect. So often we will um, confuse manners and respect with, with each other um, because someone will say to you, you're not respecting me, and you think, but you didn't earn the respect. It's actually got nothing to do with the respect. It's got, yeah, it's got to do with manners and probably being shoot from the hips, say something that you actually mean, whether the person um, thinks he deserves to be told whatever you're saying or not. Um, because if it's something that the person doesn't like, they think that you're not respecting them. But it's definitely not the fact. It is just possibly their behavior at the time is not um, worthy of being respected. Okay, thanks, Cecile. Uh, all right, Lee, do you want to pick up from there? Again, I, um, I, I love what, what you've said, Cecile. I think it just, I love this balance, you know, or this contrast between what is respect and what is simply politeness or what is accepted in society as good manners. And, and culturally and traditionally, there may be certain things that actually uh, dictate what um, uh, politeness and manners really are about and 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 respect may be something completely different. Um, I think two things come to mind. My um, oldest daughter is um, working more and more in uh, the corporate environment and with many, many other businesses. Uh, she's an under 30 year old and working with managers in their 40s and 50s. And um, I think it's it's been a bit of a rude awakening for her to realize that um, the older people get does not mean the wiser or the better behaved. Um, she's shocked <laughs> at, at their poor behavior. Um, and, and it's sort of, so that's the one thing is this um, expectation that, that maybe you, you know, where does your respect lie? And you, you're waiting for people to behave in ways that, that earn your respect. But when we talk about earning respect, then I also kind of feel like, well, where is the humility in that? You know, do you have to live up to my kind of standards and my perspective of what is right behavior and what is wrong behavior? And somehow I am the, the, the benchmark um, of, of what is... Uh, respect. So I'm, I'm a little bit unsure and, and uh, of this earning respect uh, because I wonder where, um, you know, who sets that, that level. Great. Thanks, Lee. I think that, uh, yeah, that, that, that raises a couple of very interesting questions. I see, Trev, you want to comment on that? I, I think that's such an excellent uh, question that Lee raises, this question of earning respect. And I say it comes back to you. Um, if you deliberately trying to build up this aura of respect, uh, I think you fail hopelessly. Uh, and that's why you should focus on just building yourself who you are and giving yourself the highest respect 
and then other people will cotton on to that. And so there's something else that I want to add on to that. Uh, and we talk about it in the, uh, in, in the description of role models. There's no perfect human being in the world. Um, and, and you will actually find that some of the worst human beings have one element that society can actually pick up and a role model just that single element. And if they can do that of 10 imperfect human beings and pick up 10 individual traits that are positive traits, you will have a, a perfect persona. So uh, I'm, I'm trying to give an indication that no one is perfect uh, and that we shouldn't go out there looking for people who are perfect uh, to try and respect people for their perfection. Uh, but rather to have a look at those traits that we would like to role model for ourselves and look at other people to actually take their positive traits and add them to ours. Arvid? Hi, Gertrude. Hi. Yeah, it's uh, very interesting. You know, I, I spent three years in the Rhodesian Army, uh, maybe like Ian did or whatever, because Ian went to Fort Beck High School. I went to Guinea Fowl, uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, you learn uh, authority, et cetera, et cetera. And you learn, res uh, you learn to respect the person um, however you want to take it. It's, it's, if you don't take it well, you're in the, you, uh, you're the place But, you know, the bottom line is, um, to me, is it's going to be your, uh, yourself. Um, you know, people are not going to like it, so, so be it. Uh, that's just how it is. Um, thank you. Uh, thanks, I. Sela, your thoughts on, on, on this? Yes, uh, I, I would definitely say I, I really resonate with what Trevor is saying because I also see it as also being a respectful to yourself. The way that I look at it is that when you work within a team, when you have a team structure and you have to play with other people because the world is a playground, I have to be sensitive to, 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 to you, but I don't have to necessarily now change and alter who I am just to meet you halfway. So if I just keep doing myself and I keep respecting myself and I'm as authentic as I can be, I can add value to the team. If we are all playing our roles, then we have a solid, strong team. But the moment I just feel, I just feel like the moment that I try to become respectful, I, that, that has to do with unmanaged expectations. That has to do with now projecting that I think you're gonna like me if I'm this way or that way, and I, I can't go there. I, I really believe in myself enough, and I'm confident enough to respect myself, to love myself. That way, however I come off to you, you will pick up on that respect or not, and it's okay because people are different anyway. But I have to keep doing me because I don't want to create some unnecessary expectations that I can't maintain. Right, thanks a lot, Ian. Yeah, I think this, uh, Lee touched on this whole thing, you know, what is respect and how do we actually uh, define respect? I mean, if we look at the present situation and you look at all the doctors and the nurses and all these guys on the front line, that's huge respect for those people who are going out there and doing what they have to do because they need to, to keep that, that aspect of, of, of life um, working. So I have huge respect for those people because they are not thinking about themselves, they're thinking about others. So that's a, a different angle on respect as opposed to kind of does somebody respect me because I've had so many years of service or I've done this or I've done that. So that it's, it's an interesting question because I'm not sure that the definition of respect is, is that clear because it can apply in different ways to different scenarios, as I've just mentioned. Great, thanks Ian. Yeah, I think there's, there's as, as you've said, that there's a massive difference between giving respect and expecting to earn respect. Um, you know, so, you know, if you're always expecting to earn respect, then I, then I think you, you, you've got it backwards. Uh, if you're giving respect, it comes from a very different place um, and, and will probably ultimately earn you respect, but that's, that's not the point. The point is that you actually, you, 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 I think that you started off with it, you know, if that person or those people um, are in a very different place to you and have very different ideals, very different ideas, values, motives, you can respect them without agreeing with them. You don't have to agree with them, but you can, you can respect their position. Um, 
and you then have a choice. You, are, you either work with them, as Stella says, or you move away. You know, if the, if the conflict is too great, you move. Uh, you know, if, uh, um, but by the same token, if you're in a team, um, uh, you know, if everybody thinks the same, then all of you but one of you are irrelevant. <laughs> you know, so, so you, know, you want a team that, uh, that, that comes from different perspectives and has different ideas. So, yeah, my, my thoughts on that. Uh, yes, Herman. Um, I think Ian pointed out something very important, that respect can also be situational. The same doctor might be a pick in other, in other uh, areas and not uh, deserve our respect. But right now, what he or she is doing is very respectful. So I think there is a kind of a situational um, 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 context with regards to respect. Thanks. Thanks, Simon Lee. Yeah, I want to also just um, not lose Cecile's point about um, that people will accuse you of being disrespectful if you either disagree with them or make a statement that they disagree with. Or um, It certainly has happened often uh, in my life where I have boldly made some uh, statement that I, that I truly believe that's true to me um, and it has offended uh, the other person. Um, and, and I'll just give you a simple example. Um, and I've spoken about being in the church environment. So um, it, it, it's, it's important for me to believe that God is not male. Um, so so the, the feminine attributes of God are very um, um, something that I hold dear to. Uh, but when I make that kind of assertion, um, I find that people get extremely upset and um, their hackles rise and they see it as disrespectful, disrespectful to them, disrespectful to their understanding of faith. Um, and out of respect for them, I choose not to say those things in certain environments. So I pick my context in order to make the statements that I think might be controversial. Um, I, is, am I now not being authentic? I don't know. Um, yeah, just, that's a very so, interesting so, quick. Yeah, sorry, sorry. And, um, I just want to pick up, we are heading towards the bottom of the hour. Um, you know, Cecile has again been one of the quietest. I see she did, she has unmuted her mic. So I'd just like to give Cecile a, um, a sort of a final word and then I'll run through the, the group again and just, just for a wrap up. So Cecile. Oh, I think I'm going to put the cat among the pigeons now. But um, Lee, well, just before Lee started saying that, I was um, thinking, um, as a woman, we often um, uh, uh, experience male chauvinism. And men's radars or antennas are not um, as um, finely tuned to someone being a male chauvinist as us as females as ours is so uh, um, for instance i um have a a play squash um weekly with um two other people and um the one of them is a male chauvinist and when um when i finished playing with him we swap around when i finish playing with him i play with my chiropractor who's the, the third person and then I would sometimes be the Helen. And then Clifford would say to me, what is what now? And then I say, Mark just makes me so angry. He's such a male chauvinist. It's just the little things that they do that, that, that kind of women are below men. Um, although I beat him in, in the squash game, he, he's still surprised <laughs> when you beat him. Um, look, just little nuances that will a female antenna will pick up as a, as being male chauvinistic and i'm not a feminist in any way <laughs> to me male and females are equal uh, thanks cecile uh, ian you were wanting to to get a word in there yeah, i just want to finish off and picking up what lee was saying you know we have no control over how other people think so what we do is we live in a very sensitive world and we're frightened to say things because we think people will be offended. 
if somebody says to you, well, I take offense at that, that's exactly what's happened. They've taken the offense. You haven't given it to them. They've taken the offense because we have no control over the way they think. So what happens is we find ourselves being unauthentic because you're actually saying things that we think, okay, they'll be happy with. So it gets to the point where, where do you draw the line between just saying what you think because it's your opinion, you're allowed to say it, whether people agree or disagree is, doesn't matter, um, as opposed to, well, if I say that, they're going to be offended, and then the respect aspect and the arguments and all the other things come into play. And just to finish on that, that quote, that little quote that I put onto the, um, the WhatsApp group, uh, along the lines of, that if your circle of people that you're with uh, don't inspire you, then it's not a circle, it's a cage. And um, you've got to move outside of that cage, otherwise you're going to get locked in in this kind of environment that, that's toxic and doesn't align with the, with, with the way you think and people, like-minded people. So it's a very interesting kind of aspect, Lee, and, uh, and I think that, yeah, without the risk of alienating yourself, sometimes you've got to say, well, that's my opinion. You may disagree, you may not, but you know that's kind of the way I think, and, and nobody's can influence my decision or the way I think just because they don't like it. Great, thanks, uh, Ian. Okay, Herman, just a final wrap-up word from you, and then I'm going to go to Trevor. Yeah, um, I think what we call these days political correctness is possibly one of the biggest contributors of being dishonest. Because uh, uh, can I say that? because he or she is thinking differently and uh, the racial aspect uh, uh, plays a role here. So political correctness is something I really despise. Um, before I um, mute myself, Lee, if you and I could have a, a brief word after the meeting is over, I'd love to. Thank you. Well, thanks, Simon Trevor. I was just going to say, clearly Cecile was lucky, um, but I'm not a male chauvinist in any way. Uh, Cecile, that's sense of humor stuff. Eh? Um, uh, I just think the discussion was starting to get really juicy, and we, we've now got to close off. But um, I, I think again, uh, so I'm in a little bit of disagreement with Herman. Uh, I do believe that there is a paradox to life in almost uh, everything that that we are doing uh, and that's why it is so important to build the quality of individuals around you like this uh, so that we're able to debate these issues and think about them uh, i'm an individual uh, if if i think about who's who's the famous chef i mean Sheldon loves watching him in hell's kitchen um i can't remember his name the blonde haired guy um uh, uh, you Gordon can see Ramsey. that, it, what is his name? Gordon Ramsay. That guy. Um, <laughs> he, is, he is so uh, well aware of how much he has done to earn his status as one, as, uh, one of the best in the world, um, that other people have to be very careful when they turn around and feel disrespected from them, but they do. Uh, almost 99.9% .9 of the individuals that interact with him feel disrespected because of his statements from moment one. But does he care, Jot? Not at all. Uh, and I think that's where uh, ego and self-respect and all of that uh, are very important that you are comfortable with yourself in whatever role you play. Thanks, Jeff. Guy, uh, last uh, wrap-up comment from you. Uh, yeah, maybe uh, following on from this, we can talk deeper about the word ego. Um, it's been raised quite a lot today and uh, quite a lot uh, during each conversation. Uh, Ian uh, raises it, it, it quite, quite a bit. Um, and I, from where I sit with ego is briefly ego versus how totally confident, confident you are. Um, and then briefly with Gordon Ramsay, he's, he's a beaut, Trevor. Um, you see a rough side of him in Hell's Kitchen, and then you see him go on a, a trip with a couple of other um, chefs where he's fun and down to earth, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah, it's interesting dynamics. But uh, perfect, these meetings, jeez, and they're going to end after 21 days. <laughs> 
No, no, no. Thank you, Lee. Thank you, Ivan. Okay, thanks, Guy. Hello. Uh, yeah, uh, my last word from my side. Thank you, Herman, for raising the issue of political correctness because when Lee was speaking, that's the word that came to me as first, at first was, are we now saying that we need to be politically correct, which for me, I've always felt it's saying the things that I, I feel need to be said so that I'm not seen in a bad light. I've never really liked it. I've always felt a bit uncomfortable with it. But having said that, I think the only caution that I would throw back to the group is as long as we are not generalizing, I think that's a dangerous area when we start generalizing. When we start saying males are, or women are, or black people are, or white people are, there's no such thing. People are individuals. And at some point in time, there's somebody that can seem like they don't respect you, but the further you dig deep, you find that it's just you maybe projecting, you know? So to, to try and treat people as individuals, I find that it works as well. So that we meet each other, I get to listen to you, I get to understand what is it that you are talking about exactly. Are you just criticizing for the sake of criticizing? Are you just not showing respect for the sake of not showing respect? Or what is really happening? So just to individualize, I think, kind of helps us a little bit. When we generalize, I think that's when we miss the big picture. All right, thanks, Silla. I think that was an excellent wrap up. So. I think we're probably going to pick up on this conversation some more. Uh, I'm sure we will. And uh, thanks, everyone, for, for today. And we, uh, we look forward to chatting tomorrow morning. Cheers.